Welcome to Baby and Us, a series of short videos to help you feel calm, confident and connected with your new baby. Hi, I'm Susanna. And I'm Leah. And we'll also be joined by some of our amazing parent group leaders who will share real life experiences with their own babies. Today, we'll be talking to you about connecting with your baby. So now we're going to talk to you about parentees, and you're probably thinking, what is parentees? Um, so parentees is a way of talking to your baby that can help them to learn language more easily. So the main characteristics are is a face-to-face -face contact. So you have to make sure that your baby is very close to you and that you have, you know, you kind of have them there, so they're right in front of you. You can see them very clearly. And it's a very high-pitched kind of singy-songy voice very sort of um, animated and your face will change because you're trying to get that connection with that baby. Um, it can also be a low pitch and a very calm voice. So you've got the, wow, look at that kind of a animated way, but also a very, wow, look at that sort of thing. So you give a, a bit of a contrast. You've also got a very slow, lots of slow short phrases. So things like, big, small, long. So it's very, you kind of stretch the word. Um, and like I said earlier, to exaggerate the facial expressions. So I don't know, it's very, your eyes are very big and wide and you're very animated in how you're saying things and talking to your baby because then they get that response, they sort of see the that connection and then they respond back. Um, and again, because you want to see that connection and that communication with them, you have to wait and sometimes wait a long time for them to react because obviously they're smaller and their brain is not as developed as ours. So they might, I don't know, they might do something and you go, wow. And then you have to wait because then you need for them to be able to see what you've done, take it in, process it to then give you that response. So that's quite a, a long, laborious process sometimes because it takes a while to, to get that reaction. But as they get older, it gets better. Um, and clear articulation of words. So you say it's a dog. Again, you've used all the things that I've just described and you've said what it is. I suppose just to say some people might find that they're doing this naturally anyway. Mm. Um, you might find, you know, you sort of do find that people talk to babies in a, in a different way from how you would talk to um, another adult and I suppose just to make the point that we're not talking about the kind of baby talk where you make up words so you're not going Ooh, choo -choo 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 -choo. like you're saying real proper words just in a very particular way that's going to support your baby to to pick up on those cues and to learn those words um, and I just wanted to make the point that if you're speaking English as an additional language we really recommend that you speak to your baby in your mother tongue using parentees. Um, unless your English is fluent, in which case it's not a problem. But if, you're, if you have a, a language that is definitely stronger, then that's the best language to speak to your baby in. Because you've changed the pitch, you, they possibly understand that you're talking to them rather than you know talking to someone else in the room because, I mean, they don't really understand who you're talking to, I suppose. But when you sort of talk to them, if you use a different voice, they pick up that tone. Although they don't understand the words, they understand the tone. I definitely did it because I can remember doing it to the cat. Um, and that was really bizarre because I just thought, I'm talking strange to my cat all of a sudden. I suppose right from when the girls were, were really tiny babies, when they were awake and when they were alert, you know, you'd hold you'd hold them uh, in two hands and you just look at them and be really animated. And, and just, just talking to them, but, but using a, a slightly higher voice, probably, uh, and, and, and just making fun with the words uh, so they could hear the sounds. Uh, and I've noticed that both my daughters have done that with their children. It's really helpful for babies to hear parentees because they tune into it more. So it's more like of a sing-song sort of tone, and it's a bit slower, and it would emphasise key words and that will help their language development. So no matter how silly you might feel, 
um, parentees is actually <laughs> really important and you don't have to fight it. <laughs> so we're now going to think about communicating with your baby through touch. So first of all, I just want you to think about whether you would describe yourself as a tactile person or not. So that means, do you like sort of hugs and lots of physical contact or do you prefer to have your personal space? So Liam, what about you? Are you a tactile person? Oh, very much so. I love, love to be hugged and love to hug other people. <laughs> <laughs> which I have to ask but you know I think that's um that's just me and my personality I'm quite a tactile person I like that contact yeah. with everyone if they want to be touched <laughs> <laughs> um and I think I'm probably I'm fairly tactile but I think I'm probably a bit more reserved and that it sort of it would be people that I know very well um and I do, yeah, I, I'm, I'm reasonably tactile, but probably, it sounds like maybe a bit less than you are. <laughs> <laughs> so next, we want you to think about whether you think your baby is a tactile person. So are they the kind of baby that seems to like and enjoy lots and lots of physical contact? They really like having cuddles all the time. Um, or are there times when they don't enjoy it quite so much? And... Do you notice that they respond differently to different people? Uh, particularly my first just wanted to be picked up all the time. He didn't like being put down at all. Um, hence the swing, because that at least soothed him a little bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, lots of tickling, lots of like sort of jump, um, picking up and... Um, jumping up and down and moving legs and arms and yeah all sorts of things like that um and then with my second he just yeah he just liked being soothed um he wasn't yeah he's not so fond of the sort of rougher sort of play um you know he'd have a little tickle but there was a limit to what he would stand sort of thing thinking about a couple of things we're going to look at the focus on the nurturing touch and what that means or soothing touch so things like cuddles baby massage patting hand holding stroking um those are the sort of things that we're, we're sort of thinking about so thinking about how do you use touch to soothe your baby when are you most likely to use this type of touch and how does your baby respond And then there's playful touch, things like dancing, tickles and nursery rhymes with movement. Because they're more about playful touch than they are about a calming touch and it's nice to be able to separate the two. A, because then your baby knows that you're not going to tickle them if they're crying because it's not going to work. Um, but thinking about the playful touch, it's how do you use touch to play with your baby when are you most likely to use that type of touch and how do they respond? So um, I used to use, so to soothe her, um, it was often at a time when I thought she'd be getting sleepy and um, she really liked being patted to sleep. So um, we used kind of, like patting and stroking um, and cuddles quite a lot with her that, that that would really soothe her to get to sleep um, and she she would respond by sort of snuggling in and, and getting really drowsy um, and in terms of a playful touch my son used to love rounds around the garden on the bottom of his feet so we used to talk about you know going round and round the garden on, on the sole of the foot and then the tickle would be up towards the knees because he's under his knees are really tickly and again you just got that reaction of that that complete and utter squeal of delight <laughs> so that was quite nice to do that because he loved it and it was a good response because he could see that we loved it and we could see that he loved it so it was really nice to have that interaction as well. It can be really helpful if you combine multiple types of communication. So when you're um, playing with your baby or soothing your baby through touch, um, just try to notice that you'll, you'll probably be talking to them um, in another as well as 
using touch. So um, I know that when I used to soothe my daughter, I'd um, make either use a soothing voice or say shh and um, and see her in that way. And similarly, I think when I think about playful touch, I really think about a lot of kind of nursery rhymes and singing games um, that would involve touch. And again, that can be extra, extra powerful for language learning. So, um, and it will reinforce any kind of sense of playfulness or soothing. We want you to have a think with, about how your baby communicates with you through touch. So take a moment and just have a think about that. So there are a few different examples here. So it might be that they show you that they're enjoying being held by you by snuggling into you and kind of, you know, settling in um, or, or um, losing some of that tension in their bodies. You know, if they relax into you, then you can tell that they're snuggling into you. Um, or if they've had enough, they might turn away um, and, and show you that they want to stop whatever the interaction is. Um, or if you're touching them and they're enjoying it, they might smile and, and giggle. So we really want you to notice your baby's cues and look at what your baby's telling you um, in response to your touch and how they use touch to communicate with you. I like using touch to communicate with my babies because... Um, Touch is a really important part of, our, of like our communication. If um, my children are upset, even with my son, and he's a toddler now, you know, skin to skin, like um, it, it releases oxytocin in me and in them, and that you know, calms them down. Um, it's like a very warm, relaxing hormone. Uh, I find that... Um, if they've got colic, I did this a lot for my son and I'm trying to remember to do it for my daughter, like massage. Um, so I massage uh, her tummy a lot and that just helps if she's got gas or anything. When you're bathing a child as well, it's, you know, like they have the sensation of the water and you're soothing them. You might be washing their hair and then you're drying them. I think all those sorts of like gentle caring things are nice for them. So our take home message from today is um, using parentese when we speak to our babies will help them to learn to speak. We can also use touch to communicate with our babies and we can do this in a playful or soothing way. So there are two things to try at home. Have a go at using parentese and notice how your baby responds when you use touch. And we'll finish with a song. Round and round the garden, like a teddy bear. One step, two step, tickly under there. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.